is it time that celebrities were held more accountable for what they promote? Because we see it all the time across social media. Um, yes, absolutely. And I, I kind of hope, actually, that this proves to be a bit of a turning point mm -hmm. because I think, you know, obviously, um, television advertising and in newspapers, you can't put anything out there unless it's been tried and tested and that, mm -hmm. you know, what you're actually saying it does has been proven. But social media is a bit of a wild west mm. with all of that. Um, and, th and this proves it, you know, and, and you think whatever... Uh, she comes out of the, the kind of reality show market and there will be young girls that follow her every move. Mm. Um, and, I mean, uh, I, I should... Uh, I'll get this out of the way now. So, Lauren has actually said... Um, they asked me would I promote the drink without using it. In the heat of the moment, I said yes. Also said I hadn't tried skinny coffee in the hope of getting the job. Of course, I would never promote anything that contains poison and proper checks would have been made before any promotion. I would never promote anything on my Instagram that I don't feel is right for my followers and that I haven't used. So uh, it's a good thing that it's been exposed before mm. she's actually done it or promoted yeah. it. Mm. And I hope that other people in her situation that get offered money to, mm. to promote products mm. must... At, do their due diligence first before they before they put it out there. Well, and, and, and Skinny Coffee, who's the, the 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 real product that she has promoted before, said that they're disappointed and surprised this morning to learn that Lauren's claim she didn't consume our products is fundamentally goes against our strict policy regarding honest product reviews, uh, and a and a full review will, will now take place. So so putting that to to one side, the the fact that um, to not even know what cyanide is. And the fact that, you know, there is a, a fake drink that was... That even the, the name of it was going to be called Sayonara from the word I mean, obviously, cyanide. she picked up a bit because she went, is that right? So th there was obviously a little bit of an alarm bell, but I guess mm. she just thought, oh, they mm. must know what they're talking about. And, mm. But it, it, it does make me think about diet. So, you know, when I was a kid, obviously, people dieted and, and you, you, they would get things out of newspapers or, or magazines yeah. or whatever like that, proper, proper diets... But now on social media, and every time you're online, there's something popping up on the side, yeah, you know... another pill. Mm -hmm. Miracle pill, miracle that, miracle yeah. tea. Yeah. Um, it, it, it must be difficult now. And, I, I mean, I know you've tried a lot of diets, haven't you, in your time? Every diet you can think of, I've tried. Every single one. And, um, basically, you know, all, all of these diets are, can only help you so far along the way and it's got to be down to you and your own head and you're not stupid you know people who you know that if you eat a lot of pasta a lot of bread sugar you're not going to lose weight so you know really instinctively what you have to do to lose weight and it's whether you want to make that commitment mm. to yourself or not yeah yet these diets can help you lose weight initially, a bit of weight, and then you feel good, and then it's, OK, right, now I'm on my own. But I think that's kind of aiming for, for short... It, there's, a, there's a way of thinking. It's called thinking in, in, in the infinite or thinking in a finite way. So you're thinking in a finite way. You want to get to a goal, which is lose X amount of pounds, mm -hmm. and then you think, ta-da, I'm done, but you're not done. You're never done. Be because, never actually, done. you need to think in the infinite game, <clears which is <clears throat> throat> being having a long-term yeah. healthy attitude towards food. You if, you, it if you have a weight problem, you are never, ever done. It's the same as, mm. as being an alcoholic. You can never drink. Yeah. And it's like, you know, if you want to maintain a look... You, you can't, you know, it's, it's, it's really a lifelong commitment. It's, mm. unfortunately, with the way your body is, mm. if you yeah. eat and drink certain things, you're going to put on weight mm. and that's it. What and about did you, you, Kelly? Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was just yeah. going to say, I mean, obviously, you know, we're all under certain pressures at various uh, times in our, in our life to, to, to look a certain way and obviously if you work in the public eye, mm. it, it's sort of a given. You're, you're a pop star. That must have been an incredible amount of pressure to conform and look a certain way. Well, I mean, it started earlier for me because I went to a, a performing arts school from uh, the age of um, uh, 11. So, um, but I was in, like, leotard and tights from the age of two or three. So I was always very exposed to what I looked like visually. But then once I started performing arts school, there become, became a lot of pressure 
to look a certain way and to conform and to be this sort of prima ballerina look. Um, and I wasn't. I was a, you know, a healthy black girl with hips and thighs and, you know, I got boobs and, and I was, you know, really shapely from quite a young age. As soon as mm. puberty came in, I was like, that was it. Everything was just everywhere. And I was finding myself as a young woman. But mm. at the time, I was very much told, you know, you, you know, if you don't look like this, you won't be able to be successful. If you don't have this kind of shape, you're not going to make and it right shapes, off your... And those shapes, are they smaller than yeah, you Yeah, literally sort of a, a prima ballerina shape. Right. So straight up and down, sort of, sort of noodle. Guess, yeah, sort of neutral, sort of plank-like shape, which is what is needed for ballerinas. So what does ballerinas. that do to your Psycho state of mind? Yeah, when psychologically, you look at if yeah. you did, if I didn't look like that, I didn't think I could be. You know, I was told I wouldn't be successful. I couldn't make it. So, and and everybody else looked like that. I mean, some of them achieved it, as we know, healthily and mm. unhealthily. Mm. Uh, you know, some people. There were lots of um, episodes of uh, of anorexia and bulimia, which were, was around, and you mm. could see that happening. But once I got into the band, there was even more pressure because then it's not just at school. The record right. company, what you yeah, did. you're in, you're exposed to this industry where everybody looks like this. Yeah, and so you know we had managers and people around us at the time that were like, you know, off you go to boot camp, you know, that's it. You're yeah. off and, you, you know, we were, you know, things were really regimented in those days. So, you know, we had to kind of lose weight before a video or before a photo shoot. We were told, you know, this is what you have to look like and these are the, these are the measures mm. that we're going to take to help to help you get and was there. Was that before the time of social media? Because obviously that's yeah. coming from within the industry. Mm. Nowadays, you know, any performers have got that. Plus, people on the outside mm. commenting. I mean, the obviously uh, lovely uh, Jesse from yeah. Little Mix was talking yeah. about this sort of thing. Comments, comments. W was that something that you had to deal with, or was this purely? Yeah, I mean, it was pre-social media, so I think I was sheltered from that. But yeah. I got it sort of internally, you know, from you know people that we're working with. You sure. know, sh she's the fat one in the band, and I was like, oh great, oh. Um, you know. And when they'd always bring sample sizes, and they'd go, oh, we won't have anything to fit Kelly, and I'd be like, oh, thanks, <laughs> thanks for that. So did so, you ever do anything kind yeah. of drastic to personally to try and bring, keep your weight down? Yeah, unfortunately, I was in that sort of headspace where I thought I've got to do something about it because I felt very isolated. Mm. And so I, I just used to, you know, I just used to take stuff that, to, you know, to get rid of the weight. And that's yeah. what I used to do. So do you think, obviously, that there, are, there are young people watching who would see these very sort of adverts and, and things that mm. sort of influencers are putting out on social media and would think, I'm getting all this pressure, this is what I can latch onto without mm. looking into whether it's necessary. But it yeah. up your digestive yeah, system, Yeah, I, I mean, it? I'm saying it, but I do, do not recommend it. If you're out yeah. there and you're a young person, please, you know, talk to somebody before you go to any of those kinds of links. Like, mm. I, we've got helplines, find yeah. them. But, you know, I did it because I felt like I didn't have any other choice mm. and I didn't yeah. feel like I had anyone I could talk to. And I took those laxatives and messed up my system. Them. So, in no way, shape, or form is that the way to go. Yeah. It didn't yeah. help in the long run. Yeah. Well, if, if, if anything that Kelly's just said just there, or anything that we've just spoken about on today's show has resonated with you and you think you might need some help and advice, um, we've put some helplines on our website. So, you, you should get everything that you need right there.